I'm a very expressive person, very creative person. I do better when I can share my story. I feel like I get it out of my system. You know, I get it out there. So starting the blog was really part of my healing. I was doing something. I always like to say that I have been blogging about mental health before it was cool because now everybody wants to talk about mental health, everybody. right? Which is perfect. It's amazing. Oh my friends, and they were going to be like, Aquí viene esta. Like, what, what is she, what, like, what, you know, be getting the side eyes and the stares because it, it, it just weren't conversations that we were having yet, right? And what that all means as me knowing that I'm a spirit living this human experience and what I can do to make that human experience a little bit more cushioned, a little bit easier. You have never been that type of spiritual person that's like, oh my God, look at all the chakras and the rainbows and butterflies (laughs) and look, it's all beautiful all the time. No, like you were really real in the sense that you were really exposing yourself and like, you know, putting up a mirror and really showing people what it's like because it's not. When you're going through a spiritual awakening, it's not all positive. <laughs> oh, no. You, you oh, know, no. doing that shadow work and really delving in to, you know, stand in your shit and, like, dust the corners and do, like, the spring cleaning all over the place, like Miguel says, it's hard. Dude. It is not. Again, back then, we weren't talking about this is going on. Well, you need to get therapy. And this is, and therapy is okay. For me, it wasn't. It was not okay. It was not an option because my family said it wasn't an option. From there, it really was a landslide for me. I was going to therapy two or three times a week for um, that year, and it really changed my life. Um, I'm not going to say that I was cured and I got better and da 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 because that's definitely not the case. That was mm-hmm. almost ten years ago now, and I'm still very much um, in this balancing act. But it definitely set me on a course to being curious about what is this really about and really diving below the layers because it's not just a brain problem it's an everything problem yeah and i think that really lays the foundation for everything that i do today really like brought it home to me like oh this is something i can do i can go to therapy i can talk to somebody else that's not my family that's not gonna judge me based on the things that I share with that person. And it's not going to go back and bring it to somebody else that's going to be like, you know, bochinchando behind my back, you know, discussing what I was going through. So, you know, it, it, it's it's really, I feel like having these conversations, the fact that we can have these conversations and having them is so necessary for our community. However, I think at best we are all teachers to each other and we're all just like holding each other hand in hand, trying to lead us somewhere. Um, So anytime I get to share my truth, but anytime I can share my story, it's like, I need to. It means a lot. Lots and lots and lots and lots of self-education. I want to say that therapy has been like maybe 10, 20% of my journey. The rest has been me. The rest has been me diving into, okay, my mind is one organ. What about the rest of them? Is everything else functioning the way that it needs to? It's seeing nutritionists. Um, looking at my nutrition. What are the foods that I'm eating that are toxic to my body? Man, getting a, a food sensitivity test has been life-changing. Uh-huh. Like, I had no idea that I'm supposed to be gluten-free. I'm supposed to be rice-free. ¿Tú te imaginas? Una, cu- una cubana dominicana no comiendo arroz. <laughs> Yeah, I don't eat rice. Like, it's crazy um, because it's toxic to my body. So so doing things like that, um, moving my body and learning how important it is to move your freaking body. And it's also become so much more of a priority because of that. So definitely connecting, again, the, the mind, the body, and the spirit has been major on the spiritual front. Just, again, diving into, wait a minute, I'm not just a human body. I'm also, or I, before I'm a human body, I'm a spirit. And because I'm a spirit, I need very intricate care. So it's been a lot of like intricate, like I think of myself as like this Lego castle. Thinking of my daughter at all times, who's obsessed it. with Legos. <laughs> <laughs> obsessed with Legos, but like taking little pieces and examining what, okay, this one doesn't go here, but this one does. Um, I think I'm rambling now, but I think most recently what's been really, really, really eye-opening and has really changed the game for me. And I'm kind of jumping ahead because I'm going to do a YouTube video about this soon, but I'll say it here first, is reading books and discovering that I'm not just somebody who's anxious and depressed. I'm actually a highly sensitive person. And that has been like, oh, so you mean that I am somebody who is, I've always known I'm sensitive. Hello. 
Gemini uh, sun, but I'm a cancer moon, <laughs> cancer rising. I got cancer everywhere. I'm a crybaby. I've always known that I'm sensitive, but what is a highly sensitive person? Somebody who experiences arousal at very, very high states. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I'm super hyper aroused or, or under aroused, that can create really, really big avenues for anxiety and depression. So that, again, like diving into and asking the questions and finding different ways to educate myself has completely changed the game. Self-education is one of the biggest things that I have done. Like really, you know, you start stacking. It's it, but it, you have to start with something. One thing that you can do to make yourself feel better. Do that for five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, whatever you can in the day is gonna be so life changing for you. Another thing, and I started noticing that when my depression started hitting, I wasn't moving my body in that way anymore. I wasn't singing anymore. And it was, um, the thing that really made me look at it was that I read, um, a native American saying is that when people would come to the, I guess the shaman or the medicine man saying that they were suffering from anxiety and depression, the question they would, he would ask or she would ask them is, when did you stop singing? When did you, when, when did you stop mm. dancing? And that was like, I was like, oh, shit, I'm not doing that anymore. So, you yeah. know, integrating movement in one way or another, even if I'm twerking by myself in the kitchen while I'm cooking. Yeah. It has helped me tremendously. Yes. And I know, like, you literally have to move. The energy needs to move through your body. You need to be able to push that stagnant energy around to help yourself start to feel better. First of all, the comadres want to know the scientific uh, roots of what we're talking about. Both twerking and singing, I can share real quick. Because yeah, there is. <laughs> there is science behind this, <laughs> but so much more scientific education, like so much more science to connect the mind, body, and spirit. So when we're twerking, especially, I want everybody to listen to this, which is super important. You're literally moving your sacral chakra. You're moving your sacral chakra, which is in like two inches below your belly button. This is your womb energy. You're also moving your solar plexus, which is in your, your belly button, basically your navel. Your navel is the where we all originate. It's also where all of the energy centers, 72,000 energy centers connect in the body. And then the sacral chakra is our space of creativity and emotion um, and manifestation and sexuality, sensuality. This works for everybody because we're, again, moving these parts of our bodies. When it comes to singing, um, that's your throat chakra. You know, your throat chakra is connected to your authenticity. It's connected to your truth. And when you are speaking, this is... And I'm like, hello, all you, you got is within you. All you need is within you. Yes. You are the only tool that you need. That. Sure. The yeah, definitely. That Once I started integrating that into my daily practices, I feel like my mood has changed. I'm not going to tell you I'm like 100% happy all the time. Of course. But it's easier to get back to center because I'm doing these daily practices. So when I'm having one of those like off days, I sit. I let myself have my feeling. You have to let yourself have the feeling because the thing is, it's not constructive to be like, oh my God, you're being negative. Like, don't do that right now. No, have the feeling, recognize it, be mindful of it, and then do something to, to, to work on that, right? You're not, it's not that you're not going to have negative feelings. You are. Are you going to harbor in there? Are you going to just like, you know, set down the anchor and just wallow in those feelings? No, I feel, I feel that. I don't know, some people, you know, go through the world that they're so, like, unaware, kind of, like, everything happens to them. They're not really cognizant of everything that's going on in their lives. But definitely having a moment to sit down and kind of, you know, somebody triggers you. Okay, yeah, they're an asshole, right? But what is it about that person that is having making you have that reaction, right? Because you can't control the other person. What you can control is your reaction to that person. But then you also have to dive deeper and see what it is, either the thing they said or what they do that is bothering you. And usually that's a reflection of something that you want to work on in yourself. About quote-unquote spirituality, talking about, you know, no bad vibes, good vibes only. And I'm like, yo, but that doesn't make any sense because look at where we live. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are people who are truly living in isolation, truly living in their own good vibe bubble 
And like, what type of education are you talking about? What kind of spirituality are you talking about? Because mm-hmm. it's, that's not that's not what we're here for. You know, you can't have the good without the bad. And it's mm-hmm. usually in the darkness where you discover your light. Um, and that sounds all like a Hallmark card. I'm not really. But all these vibes, all of them. Give me all of them because they're all necessary. They're yeah. all super, super necessary. There's no way that we can grow if we're only having positive vibes all the time. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally Thank impossible. You. Mom, I just one more thing from the store, please. Mom, you're